Hello, my friends, and welcome back. Thank you very much for being with me again today. Well, the British Air Force is pushing its luck, I think, or tries to provoke the Russians. Remember uh, what happened in the Baltic Sea a few months ago, I think it was in October 2022, when a uh, British reconnaissance slash spy plane was intercepted by, uh, I think, two Russian Suhois fighter jets, and one of them tried to shoot it down, uh, supposedly by receiving the wrong, not receiving, understanding, misunderstanding the wrong uh, order, and supposedly activating the missile to shoot down the reconnaissance plane. Now, that was, uh, I think, on, in the Baltic Sea, over the Baltic Sea, and now it's in the Black Sea. But now the Brits are bringing some uh, fighter jets with them. Uh, I wonder why. Nevertheless, the Ukrainians come, show up, they get scrambled over there and tell those guys to off and they do off. So, and I have the video for that. I have it from uh, Russia Today, I also have it from Sputnik. But this, this uh, article looks, I mean, it's the same, it's just the video looks much clearer on this Russia Today. This is from June 26, 2023. Russia intercepts UK spy plane video. Yeah. Two Suhoi 27 fighter jet fighters chased off a rough surveillance fight flight over the Black Sea. Two British fighter jets and an RC-135 spy plane approached the Russian borders on Monday somewhere over the Black Sea, but turned around when approached by two Suhoi 27 interceptors. The Russian Defense Ministry has said Russian air defenses registered three targets approaching the country's airspace and dispatched a pair of fighter jets that were on duty to identify them and prevent any territorial violations. That means we're going to shoot you down. The ministry, state, the ministry said in a statement. There's a translation with uh, prevent them. And I'm quoting, the crews of the Russian fighter fighters identified the air targets as an RC-135 surveillance, intelligence and electronic warfare aircraft and two RAF Typhoon multi-role fighters, end, end quote. According to the ministry, and I'm quoting, when Russian fighters approached, the foreign military aircraft made a U-turn and headed away from the border. So, uh, let's see this uh, little uh, video here. I don't know if it has any sound, but let's be prepared. Three, two, one, go. Okay, Royal Air Force. So that was it. I tried again. That over there did not look like a Suhoi. It was too fast, but we can go back. I don't think it, I mean, I'm pretty sure. I'm not pretty sure, 100% that, maybe not 100. That was not a Suhoi right there. I don't think that's a Suhoi. Because if Suhoi is, uh, has double, I don't know how to call it, the wings in the back, two engines, and that's, the shape is not a Suhoi. That's a, whatever typhoon bb gun anyway so let's go back to uh, the article here both russian fighters returned to base safely and violations of the russian border were not allowed end quote the intercept flight was carried out in strict accordance with international rules pa, 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 pa. okay over neutral waters and without a dangerous approach to foreign aircraft the ministry noted Monday's incident is the most serious confrontation between the Russian military and the NATO surveillance flight over the Black Sea since March, when an American MQ-9 drone went down, went down, <laughs> and just decided to land in the sea. <laughs> Rough landing. Southwest of Sevastopol, the US claimed one Russian Suhoi-27 intercepted, clipped, clipped, clipped the drone's tail and caused it to crash in international waters. Moscow, however, said neither fighter had been damaged. Video released by Washington showed the Russian planes spraying jet fuel on the, onto the intruding UAV before it lost contact with its operators. Oh, whatever. The US paused drone flights over the Black Sea in the aftermath, but resumed them shortly thereafter. That Ukrainian 
Okay, well, 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 well. Not that. Once these are going to cooperate. Russia has noted that Ukrainian drone and missile attacks often coincide with NATO surveillance flights. So when the Ukrainians uh, do something on a maritime, on a sea, the drones, they coincide with these surveillance flights. Two years ago this week, the Royal, Na Royal Navy destroyer HMS Defender sailed into Russian territorial waters of Crimea, that's what the Russians claim, but turned away when it was fired upon by Russian Coast Guard. I saw that video. The UK has been on the most vocal champions, one of the most vocal champions of Ukraine in the current conflict. Uh, when then Prime Minister Boris Johnson played a key role in scuttling the March 22, 2022 peace talks, according to Ukrainian media. Well, this is it. Um, I'm uh, convinced, convinced, uh, let's have heavy 99, but when I say 99, it's almost there. I just leave myself a weasel doorway out if that doesn't happen. Uh, no, but yeah, I like to say 100% certain until really there's no doubt, you know. Um, I'm 99% certain that if that, those guys would have proceeded with their operation, the Russians would have shot them down. I have no doubt, again, 99% certain that the Russians will, no problem, they will have no problem uh, destroying an American or a British airplane or whatever vessel would uh, approach and uh, try to enter their territorial waters. I have no doubt. And I, the problem is these guys know it. After the incident over the uh, Baltic Sea, after the incident with the American drone, it's clear. Those were just tests, you know, pushing it further, further, further. Guys smack down, pushed back again. They want to try again. That's how it works. It's not like, okay, we're not going to do it. Yeah, we're going to do it, but we're going to again, gradually, maybe you uh, lose vigilance or, I know, balls. In this case, I'm glad, not, not, I'm glad nothing happened and I'm glad the Brits did not push it because they would have been shot down. Or let's say a Russian uh, aircraft would have been shot down. What do you think would happen then? The Russians would be like crying and going in their safe space somewhere, crying over there, holding their pussy? I don't think so. Anyway, they would definitely not allow, uh, what's the name, uh, Trump grab them by the, you know, that would be an honor, I guess. But <laughs> yeah, I hear a lot of people, yeah, he's so mean, it's just that he didn't do it to you. Shut the hell up. I'm just kidding, not. Anyway, but so you see, if, if some people push the bullshit this way, then you help them push it even further, and they don't like it. They want to be the they want to be the uh, the arbiters of how far the bullshit so, should go. But there's they're not the arbiters. There's two in this little BS uh, conversation. So when they push it this way, push it, and let's say you don't really like it, push it further. You don't like it still, but you make them don't like it. So that's why when you hear a uh, 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 ladies. Uh, crying about Putin, uh, Putin, uh, what's his name? Not yet. Uh, Trump saying, eh, "You grab them by the oh my God, that's awful!" You know, he didn't even refer to the to you. Shut the hell up! Uh, I'm pretty sure it happened to you in the past at one point in your life, and uh, yeah, whatever. He's just jealous that um, Trump did not. Uh... <laughs> anyway, that's a different conversation here. Uh, the Russians will not go in their little safe space over there. That's for sure. And they will shoot these guys down. And when that's going to happen, what is the other guy, uh, the Great Britain, going to do? Are they going to shoot the Russians? I don't think they want that. Why? Because the Russians, I think they're waiting like this. That's how they feel about uh, Great Britain. It's like, uh, I don't know, uh, 50 generals with their fingers jumping on the release, you know, and like uh, 100 generals trying to prevent them, stopping them. Don't do it, don't do it. I don't think it's the same thing in Great Britain because Great Britain knows that their little island needs one, one missile. But Russia needs a little bit more than that. And uh, yeah, the UK likes it the way it is. We can hit you, you can't hit us. We hit you with our weapons, with our, uh, you know, generals, with all the information, with everything, with money, with, we hit you over there, you can't hit us. So we're good, we like it this way. We don't want you, we don't want to open the door for you to find a reason, uh, you know, so you can say, see, they did it to us, we have to react. They don't want to create this problem. That's why they're very, very cautious. Now, I know you have a lot of patri patriotic people on all sides, but let's put it this way, be honest, uh, if 
if there would be an altercation between the two countries, it's going to be mutual destruction to a certain extent. The problem is, Great Britain, however you take it, one missile is enough. One. So if one and one, it's not enough. This guy is going to be gone. The other guys were not going to be gone. You need, uh, I don't know, about 200, that, I think that's all you have, to hit the targets in order to be uh, e equaling one. Sorry, look over the map. I know, don't feel now. Put your flag over there. If you, if you right now are angry about this, I want you to be angry with the invasion that occurs right now in your country. And after you are very upset with that, you can be angry with the Russians because you, not maybe you, but the guys that might be offended about what I just said, they should be offended with their diversity that is creating and give you so much power. So, okay, before you accuse the, your enemies from over there, look at your enemies within, in your little common, uh, whatever, uh, house of common and all those weasels, okay? Because you're going to be from within, not from the Russians. The Russians just have to wait. You yourselves by yourself. And some other guys are doing it for you. That's the problem. Living with you in the same house. So the Russians, if they wait, I don't know, one, one and a half generation. So let's say 45 years. If they wait one and a half, you're done. You are done. The problem is the people who take over your arsenal will be very, very upset with other people. And do you think they're going to hold back? They're going to say, oh, it's payback. And there's not going to be, I don't know, hitting Mozambique or hitting, I don't know, South America. No, it's going to be the Europeans and Americans and the Canadians. That's a danger. Look at this country. When this country is going to get, get, go upside down and you're going to have different kind of, uh, you know, taking over the nuclear arsenal, then they are very frustrated. What do you think they will do? They will hit the first ones that they perceive as, hey, you did this to me, I don't know, 3,000 years ago. I'm going to pay you back now with your weapons. I mean... People might uh, know exactly what I'm talking about, but hey, by then, you and I will be dead. So, let it be. What can you do? Talk, what? Organize, and what? Go and uh, do some uh, Biden, Biden, let's vote, shit. Yeah, work within the system. Thank you very much for being with me again today. Stay strong, stay smart, look for the truth, and be just.